A lot of people contacting me lately about the railroad tracks, particularly on Main Street. And as, you're, as we all drive Main Street, we see what's going on. People are driving further and further out of their way trying to get across these tracks. And uh, we do have a commitment that these, uh, that intersection, of that railroad tracks are going to be fixed this year by the uh, railroad. And it's going to happen, I understand, in October when the resurfacing of Highway 43 is uh, done uh, down Sarnia to uh, the railroad tracks. And so be patient, a couple more months, and uh, the, the plan is that that intersection will be done uh, next year. I uh, also hear a lot of complaints about uh, Franklin Street, and next year uh, as a part of the resurfacing, the, uh, the finishing of the resurfacing of Franklin Street uh, from 10th to Sarnia, those tracks should all those those tracks should also be completed. So um, that's the best update I can give you on that. And I just want to thank uh, Councilman Craig for calling a meeting last week about the flag burnings that are going on in uh, this community. It's a it's a uh, just a, an awful act of vandalism. And uh, I want to praise the police department for their work and trying to catch this. Uh, uh, probably an individual, and uh, just uh, uh, keep tell everybody keep your eyes open. You see anything at all suspicious, don't hesitate to call 911 in your neighborhood uh, if there's something going on in your neighborhood. Um, well, let's let's catch this person. Uh, let's, but let's also not rush to judgment that this person is one particular uh, nationality or uh, who he is or who. Who this individual is because we, we really don't know so uh, that's all I have uh, city manager no comments no comments roll call mayor Peterson here councilman Thurley here Craig here Alexander here Iden Wojciechowski here double here under the required public hearings item 2.1 it's a public hearing regarding the liquor licenses issued for the premises of MCs. I'll call the public hearing. To, I'll open the public hearing and ask if uh, anybody wishes to speak. Hi, uh, my name is Clint. Um, as you know, I'm um, one of the owners of MCs. Your full um, name and address, please. What's that? Your full name and address. Uh, Clint please. Evans, um, 107 West Third Street is my address in town. Um, so I, I just wanted to address obviously some of the concerns that have that have come up here. Um, so the incident that is in question happened several months ago, and uh, since then. Um, so the, the incident in question was uh, some minors that got into the bar on a Wednesday night. Um, there was an employee that was responsible for IDing the uh, IDing patrons coming into the into the bar, um, and they obviously lost their job because of the incident. Um, we have in, we have implemented a few uh, systems of checks and balances for our security staff now um, to make sure that they're doing their job at all times. Uh, we do have two cameras at the doors, so every every IDing um, transaction is caught on on camera, um, and we can make sure that it it's uh, remote access, so we can pull up our our phones or pull up uh, iPads, anything like that, and kind of keep an eye on things if we're not available to be there, um, or we can go back and watch watch any of the incidents um, to make sure that our security is doing everything that they can, uh, that they're that they're doing their job. Um, and um, we have 15 cameras in total um, around the bar, so um, anything that's happening there, we can uh, we can recount. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, we also um, put up a wall on our patio. Um, one of the things that we noticed before, we had an old fence. Uh, it was a wooden fence uh, where our patio area used to be. That used to be a problem for us to um, for people sneaking in or passing drinks through through the uh, fence. Uh, we've put up a concrete fence now in our patio area, and that's uh, and we have someone out there at all times keeping watch to make sure that none of, nothing like that is happening, um, to to keeping with compliance. Um, and then we've also gone so far as to hire uh, private security outside private security to um, head our bouncing staff on uh, Fridays and Saturday nights when 
uh, our volume increases quite a bit um, so that all of our bases are covered um, and that we're doing everything that's within our power to make sure that it's a safe and fun environment for everybody um, and that all compliance is being met at all times. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd, I'd be happy to answer any of them. I understand that this, this looks really bad and um, I and uh, it, just want everyone to know that this is something I take extremely seriously and I took seriously when it happened and uh, we've done everything in my power to make sure that it'll never happen again and, uh, and that all compliance is being met. And I just hope that you take that into consideration today when you uh, make your decisions. Are there any questions for me right now? Yeah. yeah. I have a question of uh, Mr. Evans. Are you aware of the city's best practices program? Uh, we did the best practices program is, uh, is that with the, the bouncers that they can go meet with the police department? Something like that, yeah. Uh, that, that's the all-encompassing, the different things that we can do to, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, program. that's uh, we, we filled that out during our um, liquor license renewal, and when we applied for that. Was that something that your business w was uh, compliant with when this particular incident happened? Um, we had the the tips training for our um, security. I know um, that we were compliant with, and um, I I forgot what the first thing that this this was under last year's um, uh, liquor license application, so I can't remember. The other thing that we were supposed to do um, for that, but I, I believe that we were doing that. I think it was the cameras at the door, our cameras that we installed. It would have been that a number of your employees would have attended a training put on by a member of the one on police department. That's the tips training, yes. Yes, and they did that last year. Okay. Yes. I'm going to ask you to clarify something. Um, it says in our report from Officer Rasmussen that you told him at the time of reporting that no one was working the door that night and that because it's a Wednesday, everyone had to go to the bar to be ID'd to well, get a drink, we, which is fine, but you just stated tonight that you had someone on the door. We had someone that was responsible for IDing uh, people. Um, at that point, our Wednesday nights had not been really that busy where we needed someone to actually sit at the door, um, they were, would be able to just walk up to them and, and card them or they could come up to the bar and get ID'd at that point. And the Wednesday nights had increased, our volume had increased a little bit and uh, we, he's still responsible for, for IDing people, whether that means go sit at the door if it gets busy enough to do that or not. Now all bouncers are required to sit at the door um, for the for the duration of a Wednesday night because the volume is still high. So and so they make sure everyone's carded as they enter the door instead of being inside before they're carded. So you're saying that the bouncer's required to, but not the bartender? At, he that, was a bouncer. Yeah, oh. there was a bouncer and a bartender on staff. Okay. Um, so, I mean, either one can ID them as long as somebody's, being, as somebody's doing that. But that particular bouncer is still responsible to make sure everyone is, is carded that night. That's his primary responsibility, and he knew that. So okay. that's why he lost his job. George? According to a report, here, there were 16 minors uh, that were arrested in your establishment, inside and out, apparently. Uh, and at that particular time, of course, no one was watching that door. Right. Uh, why would they not have been watching that door when that is their primary job and the liability it carries with it for not watching it? Because, you know, you folks have a hell of an investment in that establishment down right. there. And you would think you would have all those basics covered that, you know, someone needs to be at that door. And when I'm starting to wonder if 16 got caught, how many came and went before that? That just kind of, you know, I think about, you know, things like that. But if you can explain again as to why that door was abandoned and these 16 came through. Because I have not heard a good excuse yet. Right. And, and again, I, I'm not trying to make too many excuses. I, I understand that it's, uh, that it was a mistake and it, it was, they should have been at the door at that time. And that's part of the reason why it was um, so frustrating to me and part of the reason why it was inexcusable for them to and that's why they lost their job because they know that they're supposed to, to do that if if the volume increases so um, again it, it's not it's not an excuse it, it, it's what needs to happen and that's what we've 
we, we've done now, and I work, I work so closely with all of my security staff now, um, and I, I worked with them before, but not on the level that I do at this time, to make sure that everyone's doing everything they're supposed to be doing when they're supposed to be doing, that they understand their priorities. I, I grilled these guys constantly, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I basically nag them every, every time, I'm, uh, every day and every time I see them. Um, so that they know what they're what they're supposed to be doing, and they know that they have to protect our investment. And unfortunately, not everyone cares as much about that place as as the as we do, as the owners do. And and so we have to make sure that we have someone at the door that we can trust, someone that's running our security that we can trust. And that's why we've gone so far as to get, you know, private security that comes in to help us out on the higher volume nights and the nights that aren't so busy. I'm I'm around to make sure that someone is constantly doing what they're supposed to be doing. Michelle? I have one more question. Um, when they were interviewing some of the girls, the, one of the other things that kind of makes me a little uncomfortable, and I know it's not probably specific to just your bar, but the young girls were telling me that they go to your, or telling Officer Rasmussen that they go there because it's wing night and they know they can get in, and if they're extra friendly, the bar tenders, they won't get carded. So what I'm wondering is how you're going to combat that, because I know it's probably an issue with attractive females anyway, but if you're letting underage people in and they know they can go there to get in because it's wing night and there's no one on the door, how are you going to make sure this doesn't keep happening if you're not there to, or enforce? Because it actually, I think you were there that night. Is that correct? Yes, I, I was around um, doing other things. Um, but that, after that particular night, now it's, it's standard that they have to be, on Wednesday night, someone has to be at the door. They give a, they card everybody that comes in. If they're under 21, they, um, they get an X on their hand. If they're over 21, they get a wristband. Uh, they can only order alcohol if they have a wristband, and then the bouncers, the security staff for the, those particular nights have to make sure that, that the people that have wristbands are, are the only ones that are able to consume alcohol that night. Um, so that we implemented that right away, um, and um, that, that's basically how we go about doing it. And that and just being there a lot, um, you know, I, this is... This bar has been as much of a handful for me as any other bar that I've ever owned, or more so. So I'm there primarily all the time and uh, making sure that what my security is supposed to do, I'm, I'm watching and making sure that they are doing that, in fact. So I'm there to make sure that that's being done as well, constantly checking the, the tapes, security tapes, to make sure that uh, everyone's getting carded when they come in, and then just watching my staff while they're, while they're working. Al, you have a question? Yeah, I, I just really have more of a comment than a question, though. I, I also note from the report that on that same paragraph where it talks about uh, friendly uh, patrons and no carding, but it, it mentions the particular individuals would come there on Wednesday nights, plural, and if it wasn't for the compliance check and this action, who knows if it would have still continued. Well, I, I can say that I had noticed the increase in volume overall, and, and that I, for whatever reason, the Wednesday nights had been getting more popular. Uh, people had, had more people had been coming to do wings. We'd been selling more wings, um, so it had gotten to a point where, believe this or not, um, I had already considered just having somebody at the door and having somebody else help bartenders instead of having you know having two people working and one of them being the security helping out and jumping on the door if it was, you know, if it got busy, it was more uh, now we were going to have a bouncer at the door primarily and uh, carting everyone that came in um, to make sure that this, you know, we wouldn't have a problem going down the road. So I had noticed that the volume it starting, was starting to increase and that was going to be addressed, but uh, obviously the compliance check happened before that and, you know, we had to... Uh, React a lot, a lot faster, and that's why you're here tonight. And change, yes. Other questions? I guess not. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak? Or Mr. Hood. Mr. Mayor and Council, just a couple things, and I think this has already been noted that. Uh, that MCs did participate in the best practices program um, and that in your packet is the best practices guidelines. Uh, in this particular case, there were uh, 15 violations and those are noted 
uh, in the report as well. Uh, if you look at the best practices guidelines, there are you know two categories of best practices guidelines: one for participants and one for non-participants. Uh, the category that would come into play under the best practices would be uh, for first violation, 11 to 19 violators. The guidance of this document states that that, uh, that fine uh, would be a $1,000 fine with a 30 days uh, stayed suspension. Questions for Mr. Hood, George. Uh, but we, we can deviate from that. You can. Still in the public hearing. Now uh, we're still in the public hearing. Anybody else wish to speak? Step to the podium. State your name and address. Kenneth Kiger, three two four Valley Oaks Drive, Winona. Uh, just have a question about the age of the patrons who were, uh, the underage patrons who were uh, arrested or fined that evening. Uh, I don't know if it says the age is in here. Uh, Chief, do you have any idea? 15, 20, I mean, anybody got any numbers? Year-olds, okay. so and, and a mixture of. Maybe we could page through, but uh, basically that's what the age group was. Anybody else wish to speak to this issue? I'll ask again. Anybody else wish to speak? Final time. Anybody else wish to speak? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and open it up for council discussion. <laughs> Well, I'll start, I guess. I, I guess I'm really troubled by 15 people being in there, all underage, with the owner present. And, uh, you know, you wonder how much of this has been going on. It's just, I think word gets out and people know this is an easy bar to get into and um, take advantage of. And I think we should uh, set an example here. Um, I don't know what that is exactly, but I think we should definitely uh, impose a penalty. Jerry? I have a question for the chief. This happened in uh, mid-January of this year? Correct. Has there been anything else since that time? Night shift is typically the group that deals with the bars, and I did talk to the night shift sergeants. They haven't had any significant issues with this particular bar since then. I looked through all of the calls just the other day. Um, pretty standard, you know, uh, from, from the other bars. And I did note at least on uh, several occasions uh, the, the night shift did go in and do some more compliance checks with no violations. Thank you. Yep. George? Uh, if we're looking for a motion, I'll throw a motion out there for uh, council to, for consideration. 11 to 19 violators, it's $1,000 and a 30-day suspension. Uh, I would move that we just impose a fine of $1,500 and no suspension. I'd second that. Do we have a motion by George and seconded by Michelle. Further discussion? Mr. Uh, Hood? For purposes of the resolution uh, in the packet, uh, this is a $1,500 fine. It does talk about that the fine be paid on or before do you want to add a date to that? I would add the date that it be paid by this Thursday. Which is... Is that uh, agreeable to you? 21st. Yes, although it, it does recommend a five business days, I'm okay with... Well, I guess that's three. I guess I'd give them till Friday if I had a choice. I would go with Friday then. Motions for a payment of fifteen hundred dollars. <throat> Excuse me, by Friday of this week. Is there further discussion? Is there a certain time we need to give on Friday, or just before the end of the business day? 
Questions or comments? Jerry? Just so people know uh, what we're talking about here, had this bar not worked with the police department, they would be facing a 30 day suspension, which in most bars' cases, that probably means going out of business. I mean, most places can't operate for a full month. I don't know theirs, but we've heard from other bars if they had to face a 30 days, they wouldn't be able to continue. Due to the fact that they did work uh, with the police, do the best practices, although they didn't follow it well this particular evening, that's why it has been what we've done. We stay that suspension. I have a question, though. It stayed for how long? Has it stayed forever until the next thing? Or what would happen if there is another minor infraction you know, is this like a probation and then the sentence comes down if they make another mistake shortly? What would happen again? We're hoping it doesn't, but in a week from now, if... My, Mayor and Council, my understanding is that the motion does not include a suspension. It's fit, so just, it's not just, a state suspension, it is just There's that. no suspension. Okay. If I could further... If there was a state suspension, what does a state suspension actually mean? State suspension would mean basically that, um, well, it's undefined, uh, but presumably if it was a state suspension, we would want to define if there's a same or similar violation in that same period of time, then the suspension would be imposed. Oh, sorry, Paul. I, I don't think we have to. Uh, reference the state suspension because as I read, if there is another violation at that point, there's another fine and the state. The state becomes back on the table again. So if there is an, another violation. It, yeah, to be perfectly clear on that, if there is another violation, we would be coming back to you for another proceeding. We would then be looking at a second offense and looking at the guidelines from that standpoint. And certainly in a second offense, at least the guidance talks about a mandatory stay. But that would be a $2,000 mandatory suspension. suspension. Yeah. be a $2,000 fine plus 30 days suspension. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I'm balancing here. That, that makes the most sense. Unfortunately, though, depending on how we would operate or how we could operate with a stayed suspension, this took uh, six and a half months to get to us because it has to work through the court system first. So it could be, you know, a considerable amount of time. Would a state suspension be earlier, but it still would have to wait through the court system, I'm assuming, yeah. to find out true guilt on those that are accused. So yeah. it wouldn't change much on the actual timeliness. I, I think that's right. I, I don't know that effectively a, a state suspension does very much. Yeah, and again, the reason I was asking is in the event it would be a quicker process, but we, the city council, can't operate until it works itself through the court system. That, that has been uh, the, our process from our office through the city council historically, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is a request by the Winona Symphony Orchestra to display a sign at Wyndham Park from September 22nd through the 29th. I would note if the new sign posts are up by then, this would be at Central Park. I move. Okay, motion by Michelle. Second, anybody? Second. Second by Paul. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All the same sign. Carries. Item 3.2 is a request to close Ewing Street for a cancer benefit between 4th and 5th Street on September 6th, so moved. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry. Any discussion? Questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Item 3.3 .3 is request for utility fee adjustment from Diane Jackman of 360 Zumbro Street. Is she here? Mm 
Hi, I'm Diane Jack. You may want to pull the microphone down a little. I'm Diane Jackman. I live at 360 Zumbrel. Um, I'm here for a leaky toilet for a water bill. And my cousin's going to speak for me. Okay. Hi, I'm Brenda Cross. I live at uh, 977 East 5th Street. Um, this is in reference to a water bill that she received for $965. Um, she's a single grandparent raising a 10-year-old daughter. She's always paid her water bill on time, never had an issue, it never runs over $100. And when she received this bill, she knew it would be a little higher because she had been running the water because they recommended that for freezing and stuff. But when she got it, it was $965.67. So she went and asked what was going on. So they did send somebody to the house and they replaced the meter at the basement because it was a very old one. And they started looking around and they went upstairs and couldn't hear anything. And then they went into her bathroom and said, well, I think we can hear a little bit of a leak. So she's like, I can't even hear that. So she actually went in there and got down on her knees to hear this little dribble that was going. So the very next day, she had a guy come in, fix the toilet. And then she went up and she paid $100 down on that bill. The next month, she got another bill for another $379.59. And now her bill is sitting at $1,288. There's no way she can afford to pay that. And on top of that, they're penalizing her. She just got a penalty of 40 some dollars because they, she did not pay it in full. And she came and she talked and said, there's no way I can come up with this kind of money. And so then they throw a penalty on top of her. Now, how that happened, that her bill could have been over $1,300 for three months, if it was just a little dribble of a toilet, I don't know. Was the, uh, was the meter checked? To t they put tested? a new meter in. And was now the old one tested to make sure it was no. accurate? No. No. Uh, Mayor and Council know that the meter was not tested, but there was considerable time between when the high water was noticed and they were notified and then from when it was repaired. And my understanding from what I've received is that there were a couple of toilets that were, were leaking. There were two, two toilets. toilets. Yeah. But they were, there was a card left on the door and there were a couple of phone calls made and about oh, two or three weeks passed before repairs were made. She did say she had a call from the city. Um, she never gets home until after 4.30. So to call, you know, and she's like, well, how am I supposed to call? And they didn't really tell her what it was about. She just said it was the city of Winona. Um, please give us a call. But, you know, like she said, if they just said, hey, we've got a problem with your water, your bill, we're seeing the meter running, you know, somehow she said she could have called, like maybe during her lunchtime at work or something, maybe she could have called. But just getting a phone call that says, this is the city of Winona, please give us a call. But as soon as they did come, and check the meter and put a new one in. The following day, she had somebody there and hadn't changed. Michelle? Well, I have a couple of questions. My first one is, I think this is over a six-month period because it looks like it was January to May when you got the $900 bill, and then, or April, sorry, and then from April to August when you got the $300 bill. Right. So I just want to make sure it's not a month. Right. It was right. six months. Yes, yes. But, but you, it's every three made, months. But basically. you made a you made a payment in May but you didn't make any more payments. Y even knowing that you couldn't afford it, I'm just curious as why you didn't continue to make payments or call and try to make arrangements about the late fees, explaining your situation. Why, why did you wait from May till now to make a payment on your bill? I was told that I should call, and I called, and I tried to call Keith, and he'd call me, and we were playing kind of phone tag back and forth. When I would call, it would be, you know, they'd be closed, I'd leave a message, and then he would call me and left a message, just as Keith Nelson, I called, you know, um, you calling, and we were playing phone, back and forth, the phone calls. I understand. And I, I didn't know who I should talk to, if I should make a payment, or what needs to get done, I didn't know what what to do at the time. No, I, I, I was understand told that to part, because I know if you work, it's hard to get people that close early, but I mean, even knowing that you maybe were gonna come and meet with us, why wouldn't you at least continue to make payments on, on a monthly or 
I, that's the part I'm, I'm confused about. Because anyone who gets a big bill, like a doctor bill or car repair, you're not going to not make the payment because it was more than you thought. You're going to keep paying it down until you can figure out what the situation is. So I'm just curious, knowing that you had two leaky toilets, which you, and then you knew the water bill was high, why you wouldn't at well, least I, work towards paying what you would normally pay? Right. I paid 100 and then when I got a hold of Keith, then I ended up paying another 100 down. Hmm. I guess I don't see that on my report. Oh. That's why I'm asking. I, I have it here. Yeah, she's paid twice. She's paid $100. And normally her water bill would be $100 for three months. So I ended up paying $200, but we're playing, kind of playing phone tag back and forth in between. It looks like she paid $114.58 once, correct? That was back in March before the high water bill. So I'm talking about after the high water bill, there were no sub subsequent payments made according to my report, except for that one payment. It only shows one payment in May. Have you have made another payment since then? Yes, I have the receipt here. When was that made? 8 no, 8 Last week. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why. I get it. You don't have that then? No, no. ours only goes to August oh, 1st. Because okay. she got this bill on, well, this date of this bill is 8-1, and then on 8-11 she went in and paid okay. another hundred. We have other questions for her? I guess not. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion anywhere? <coughs> I would so move, Mayor, that uh, we decrease the bill by $300. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a second. Motion by George, seconded by Al. Um, Jerry, you want to talk about monthly billings? Nope. Oh. Uh, <laughs> since, uh, um, I do have a question, though. You did run your water as a precaution over the freezing months. Yes. Did you... Talk to the city about that small reduction plan that we had. No, I didn't know that I was supposed to. I was just told some people at work that I, could, that I should run my water. What was that amount that we were providing? What was the maximum? Seventy. dollars Seventy dollars per month. Per month. Okay. Pardon me. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just that that softens the the amount of whatever reduction we go with is because. If she would have asked, she would have, you know, automatically got the seventy bucks that she asked. True, but they allowed someone to come in. Other, other comments? What, what, what does the city? What is the city? And I see Mary, our director, our finance director, is here. What's the city's policy, Mary, with regard to bills of this size and? Does the city offer a payment plan uh, that can be worked out between the individual and, and, the, um, and the finance department? Mayor and Council, uh, they, um, we don't have like a, a special um, software for payment plans, but <laughs> we do have some people that maybe pay uh, like $50 every three weeks or something like that. And so it just gets applied to their bill, um, you know, whenever they can make the payment. So we, so I, we do, and we put it in the, like our notes section. Um, and if that is the case, then the special assessment list that you see tonight, would, they would not be included on the special assessment list because we'd have a, a plan with them. So we do have a few people that are making special arrangements. When, when they do that, are they mm -hmm. um, then also uh, required to pay the late fee, or is that they still pay the yeah they still pay the uh, the late fee, the um, if for some reason they wouldn't have gotten a bill and they have a good payment record, then we may waive the late fee, okay. but otherwise there is a charge on the unpaid balance as there is for all the other utility customers. Right. What percentage is that? It's a 5% on the unpaid balance. Right. Mm -hmm. And to say that's on for all of the utility customers. Okay. Thank you. 
I guess I'm just going to state that I'm a little uh, concerned about, it seems like every council meeting lately we're getting a request for somebody to reduce their, their water bill. And uh, Winona City provides a service to go around to people's homes and alert them when there's a problem. And a lot of cities don't do that. And I think a lot of cities don't usually reduce bills, but in the case where there's something like this, they will have um, an opportunity to stretch out those payments, remove the penalties, um, you know, give them a chance to pay it off over a period of time. But it just seems like we're kind of on a slippery slope here in reducing people's water bills on a kind of a regular basis. And where does it stop? Michelle? I think it's no surprise how I feel about it because you're asking neighbors to pay your water bill. I would be more in favor of, as you suggested, making a payment plan that does not require them to pay late fees if they stay in good standing with the city water department. Um, I think anything that happens in the home has to ultimately be the responsibility of the homeowner. And because we provide a service does not mean that that service allows them not to pay the utility bill. And although I feel for each person that this happens to, I think as long as we can work with them, especially with the late fees, that as Mayor Peterson just stated, this is not something we cannot do for everyone in the city. It's just not possible. So to do it for a few, it seems wrong to me. Because I know that on any given day, you could encounter someone who's had a high water bill because of a leaking toilet or a frozen pipe or their water or sewer lines backed up into the house. You can encounter a, a variety of issues. And so for my part, I'm not in favor of reduction. I think the city offered that program and there was ample time for people to sign up for it. And so even considering that, I'm, I'm more in favor of having the, the water department or the finance department work with the person to make up a payment plan that works for their life that doesn't incorporate late fees. Mary, I'd like to ask you a question. Has your office looked at monthly payments yeah, monthly um, billing and what that would we be. We have, we've done a, a rough draft um, and it would be more expensive. There would, we would need another person in the finance department. Right. According to the water department, they would need another person. There's additional postage. Um, so there is additional cost. We Obviously we can do it, but there would be additional cost. So I've got a, a, dra a rough draft um, of what it would be, but it, um, just as I say, just that alone is would be quite expensive. Thank you, George. Well, you know, like in, in regards to water bills, yes, a lot of them. For the time I've been here, and Councilman Craig, we see a lot of them come and go over the years, and every situation is is different. It, it can be a hardship. Uh, you know, it can be maybe something drastic. You know, drastically happen. Uh, every case is heard differently. And we make a decision differently on every case. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item 3.4. He has a request for a handicap stall on Sanborn Street in front of the house at 401 Mankato. Move to approve that application. Motion by George. Second. Seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Under new business, item 5.1 is to set the date for the public hearing to consider the resolution to levy assessments for unpaid charges. The hearing would be on September 15th, and this evening you received an updated list of the proposed assessments. So moved. Second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Passes. Item 5.2 is a license agreement with MnDOT for access for bridge maintenance. Move to authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the agreement. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Paul. Any discussion? Carrying none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.3 is the certification of completion, final estimate, and resolution of acceptance for the county state aid highway 32 bituminous mill and overlay project. So moved. Motion by Second. Michelle, seconded by Al. <clears throat> Discussion? 
Hearing none. We'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.4 is the Winona Police Department Sergeant's LELS Local 261 2014 Labor Agreement. Move to approve the labor agreement. Second. Motion by George, seconded by Jerry. Any discussion? Carry none. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 7.1 is council concerns. Michelle? Um, it's almost time for the cemetery walk. And by that I mean it's coming towards fall. And I need volunteers. It's fun. You get to learn a little bit about Winona history. You can contact me or anyone at the History Center to sign up. We're looking for actors, singers, guides, people that can throw hay bales. I don't know. Um, anyway, I love the cemetery walk. This year we're doing Winona Goes to War. We're going to cover Winona's involvement in the wars from the Revolutionary War all the way up to the Vietnam. So it should be a pretty good event um, with a lot of great stories. And on that note, if you have a personal story related to any of those wars, also contact the History Center. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Um, we had a really good meeting, uh, I think it was last, whatever day it was, last Thursday regarding a real bad topic, and that was the burning of flags. And I want to say something about that. There's been a lot of talk about, is it a flag burning, is it not a flag burning? It matters little what the motivation of the person lighting the fire is. What matters is that person is stopped, caught, and prosecuted. But what we did find out at that meeting was what matters a great deal is what emotions go through the owner of that flag that was burned, the, the feeling of violation of the neighborhood, that's what's important and that's why we're acting. We're not jumping to any conclusions about what the motivation of this person who's making a serious mistake, is it political, is it vandalism, is it, well, we, don't, we don't care about that. We just want to catch him, we will catch him. Uh, there will be some information coming out pretty soon, uh, hopefully later this week, about when and where we're going to start the new meetings for the West End uh, Neighborhood Watch. And uh, we've already talked to Councilman uh, Borchakowski, the East End uh, Neighborhood Watch will also assist. Um, so uh, look for that information. It'll be coming out, uh, like I said, hopefully I can get it together by later this week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just a note of sympathy to uh, one of the city employees, Deb uh, Beckman, uh, on the passing of her mother. Uh, and uh, sympathy again for Deb and her family. That's all. Paul? Uh, my... Uh, comment is that um, I think we need to do a much better job, particularly as we're going through budgets, to identify property that is owned and maintained by the city of Winona. I've been amazed as I've gone around and looked at our parks, uh, senior center, everything, of the lack of signage that says city of Winona, taxpayers are paying for this or something to that effect. Um, we acknowledge people who give gifts and that uh, uh, they've donated this to the community, and that's great to acknowledge that. But when we get these gifts, comes with it a perpetual maintenance agreement. And what taxpayers need to understand is that on every one of those buildings, parks, whatever, there is an ongoing cost, and we fail to recognize uh, all of the property that that the city owns, including the Bud King Arena. Uh, there is not a sign on the arena that says City of Winona. And, um, and so that's, that's my comment. Okay, thank you. George? Thank you. Nothing this evening. Oh, what? My, whoa. Oh. Okay, sorry. I'll come up with something. I'd like to ask the city clerk to make note of that. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Chief? Everything's good in the... I was feeling a little under the weather. Uh. <laughs> wow. On to the consent agenda, then. There are four items, approval of the minutes from August 4th and August 15th, the final adoption of an ordinance to eliminate handicap parking at 715 East 3rd, final adoption of an ordinance to establish angle parking on Main Street, and a claim against the city by Marilyn Brisa. Mayor, I would, I would uh, like to poll item 8.3 for a separate vote, and then I move to approve the other items on our consent item second. list. Okay, we have a motion and a second on three out of the four items. Any 
discussion? All right, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Passes. I'd move on the 8.3 ordinance to establish angle parking. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, from Michelle and Paul for uh, the 8.3 item. Discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. I meant to Here's. vote no. <laughs> what? He I meant, meant to, to vote, vote no. no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll count it as a no. Okay, Thanks for that. <laughs> Hold the item. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long meeting now. I move uh, we adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>